922 BC, Rehoboam, King Solomon's son and successor, attempted to carry out some oppressive policies. This led to the secession of northern Israel. Jeroboam, the spokesman of the northern tribes, was encouraged to lead a revolt. When Rehoboam refused to halt taxes and forced labor, the northern Israelites split from Judah and chose Jeroboam I as their king. The kingdoms of Israel and Judah continued with a separate but interrelated existence for about 200 years until the fall of Samaria in 722 BC by the Assyrians. This era of division was mixed with peaceful as well as trying times for both Israel and Judah. For example, once Rehoboam secured the kingdom of Judah, he forsook the law of the Lord, as did the people. As a result of this apostasy, the Lord allowed Shishak, king of Egypt, to come against Jerusalem and take away the treasures out of the house of the Lord. Judah and Israel would also struggle against one another. Abijah, the son of Rehoboam, went to war with Jeroboam. Now under his leadership, Abijah and the people of Judah served the Lord and cried unto him. When Jeroboam battled against Abijah, God smote Jeroboam and all of Israel. The children of Israel fled before Judah, and God delivered them into their hand. The son of Abijah, who ruled after him, was Azah. Azah reigned in Jerusalem for forty years and did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He drove out the Sodomites and removed the idols. He also brought in things dedicated into the house of the Lord, silver and gold and vessels. So there was peace in the kingdom during this period. Towards the end of Azah's rule over Judah, Ahab became king of Israel. Now Ahab did evil in the sight of the Lord. He married the Phoenician princess Jezebel and served the god Baal and worshipped him. Jezebel slew many of the prophets of the Lord, but the prophet Elijah was protected, as were other prophets. God sent Elijah to Ahab, and with boldness Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal who ate at Jezebel's table. Elijah made the 450 prophets of Baal place a slaughtered bull on their altar of sacrifice, and Elijah would place a slaughtered bull on the altar of the Lord. Elijah proclaimed to the servants of Baal, Call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answers by fire, let him be God. The prophets of Baal called on their God from morning till noon, but there was no answer. Elijah began to mock them, and they started to cut themselves with knives till blood gushed from their wounds. They continued to cry until evening, but there was no answer from the gods they worshipped. Then came Elijah and poured four barrels of water upon the altar of the Lord. He did this three times and called upon the God of Israel. Then fire from the Lord fell and consumed the sacrifice and licked up all the water. The people seeing this gave glory to God, and Elijah slew all the prophets of Baal at the book Kishon. Time went on, and again the northern kingdom fell into idolatry. During the reign of Jeroboam II in the mid-8th century BC, the people also became materialistic and oppressed the poor. To bring Israel out of this debauchery, God sent Amos to prophesy. Amos rebuked the king and his pagan priests for thy idolatry. He preached to the people to turn away from idol worship and to worship the one and living God. Unfortunately, the king, priests, and people would not hearken to the prophet's teachings. Amos then prophesied, saying, Thy wife shall be a harlot in the city, and thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword, and thy land shall be measured with the line, and thou shalt die in an unclean land, and Israel shall be left captive out of the land. Amos 7.17 This prophecy would soon be fulfilled, for in 722 B.C. the Assyrians invaded Israel. Samaria fell, Israel was destroyed, and the ten northern tribes were led away captive, never to return. Thus derives the saying, the ten lost tribes of Israel. This is the leap of faith.